AI companies and AI Twitter love to flex how amazing their models are. One common phrase you'll hear is AI won't replace you, but a person who knows how to use AI will. Well, today I'm gonna put those claims to the test, literally. I'd like to say that I am indeed a person who knows how to use AI. Here are some quick credentials. But anyway, OpenAI says its GPT models have passed the MCAT. But how useful is that to us though? I mean, it's not as if future medical students can ask the AI to take the test for them. But at the very least, I'm here to see if an AI generated study guide can help you study for the exam. Whether that's the MCAT, the LSAT, the SAT, AP exams, and so on and so forth. So is AI capable of helping the next generation of students and scholars? Let's find out together. Today, I'm gonna be taking on the MCAT or the medical medical college admissions test. Now note that the whole test is around eight hours long, so I won't be doing the entire thing. I'll just be doing the chemistry part, or as it's officially titled, the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems part. I chose this part because I'm bad at chemistry. I took two chemistry courses in college in my freshman year. So needless to say, it's been a long time. Oh yeah, I also dropped organic chemistry. But hey, I'm not starting from absolute scratch in the chemical world. I just wanna see how much AI can help me, and by extent you, study for this test, or any test. Here's how I'm doing that. All code is available in the description, by the way. See, the test that I'm taking consists of 59 multiple choice questions. And while I don't believe I'll get a good score, I do hypothesize that the version of me who used AI to study will fare better than the version of me that didn't. That being said, I'll be taking the same test in three distinct ways. First, I won't even read the questions. I'll just randomly generate 59 answers, A, B, C, and D. In expectation, this method should get me around 25% of the questions right. Heck, if I'm really lucky, I might get all of them right, but that's highly unlikely. Nevertheless, I'll be using the results of this randomized answering as a sort of control group. Then I'll take the test without having studied at all. I'm going in with nothing but my raw brain and a vague recollection of my freshman year at Stanford. Here's a picture of one of the actual chemistry study guides I made for myself years ago. My hypothesis is that I'll be able to make enough educated guesses to outperform the randomly generated answers method. But here are the two possible outcomes of that phase of the experiment. If my educated guessing score is higher than my randomly guessing score, then I know that it would be better for me to go into the test blind and try than it would be for me to just go in blind and randomly fill in bubbles. However, if my educated guessing score is lower or equal to the randomly guessing score, then I know that me trying is basically the same as me guessing. Or in other words, I really don't know chemistry. Now, here's where AI comes in. I am going to generate an AI study guide for this section of the MCAT. Now, if I were really studying for the MCAT using the study guide, I would literally just memorize it cover to cover. Then I would do some practice tests with this knowledge essentially downloaded into my brain. Note that this is how I actually studied when I was in school. Memorization and tons of practice tests. However, since I don't think I have the bandwidth to memorize an entire study guide right now, I'm just gonna take the test open book. Being able to reference a study guide like this simulates having the information downloaded into my brain, aka having the whole thing perfectly memorized. Then I would take the answers that I put down during my educated guest trial and see which of those answers I would change based on the information that I now have access to from the study guide. By the end of this, I'm hoping to see the following results. First, random guessing should give me a score of around 25%. Second, educated guessing should give me a score of slightly slightly higher than 25%, or to be more specific, slightly higher than the randomly guessing trial run. And finally, I hypothesize that AI-assisted test taking gives me a higher score than pure educated guessing. If the third statement turns out to be true, then I conclude that AI can indeed be used to create an effective study guide. All right, let's do this. Here's how I'm creating my study guide. First things first, I'm going to a trusted source, Khan Academy. I've used Khan Academy in the past to help me study for tests, whether that's my AP chemistry exam or my college discrete math course, and they've been extremely helpful. Khan Academy has a playlist on YouTube specifically for preparation for the MCAT. I'm gonna make my study guide purely based on the content of that playlist. Here's the stack. First, I'm gonna download the audio of these videos and run them through a transcription AI. Here, I'm gonna be using DeepGram's Nova, the world's deepest trained automated speech recognition model to date. Not only are the transcriptions easy to read, but they're also quickly produced. More specifically, I transcribe the entire playlist, which comes to around 1800 minutes of audio, AKA about 30 hours of Khan Academy videos in around five minutes. All right, now that I've transcribed all of these videos, I can pass the transcriptions through another AI that will summarize them for me. That way, all these audios are now rewritten as easily digestible chunks, thereby saving myself the time and energy of having to watch every single video again and again and again. It's kind of like studying based off the notes you took in class, where the class is Khan Academy and the notes came from AI. Now I have a series of files stratified by topic, 
If I want to review weak acid titration, all I have to do is check out the file titled Weak Acid Titration Summary. And the same goes for different topics, from specific heat to Gibbs free energy to spectrophotometry. And by the way, using Khan Academy's videos in particular has been especially useful because the videos run through specific examples of certain practice problems. So not only am I getting information on fundamental principles of chemistry and biology, and not only am I getting general formulas, but I'm also getting walkthroughs of practice problems as well. All right, now that we know how my study guide was made, let's start to to take the actual test. And what better way to take a test than with an intense montage? Okay, let's see how I did. First off, here are my answers for each trial. While I can't show you the actual exam, since the test material itself is copyrighted, I can show you which questions I got right and which ones I got wrong. And the results are as follows. By randomly guessing, I got 21 out of 59 of the questions right, which hovers around expectation. By educated guessing, I actually scored worse at 20 out of 59 meaning I don't really know my chemistry. But here's where things get interesting. With my AI-generated study guide, I ended up changing seven of my answers. For each question, if the answer wasn't contained in the study guide, or if it was and I just couldn't find it, I ended up leaving my original educated guess response as it was. Out of those seven changes, five of them went from being incorrect answers to correct answers, while the remaining two went from incorrect to incorrect, which also means that all of my educated guesses that were already correct remained correct as well. That is, the study guide never steered me wrong. It only steered me right five out of seven times, which is a 71% correction rate. Not bad. Or to put it in MCAT jargon, both randomly guessing and educated guessing got me a score of around 121, but my AI study guide boosted my score to 123. Now, don't get me wrong. None of these scores would ever get me into medical school, but the AI study guide did yield some improvement. So there you have it. As I hypothesized, creating a study guide with AI indeed helped me on the exam. That being said, I did make some assumptions during this experiment. First, I assumed that Khan Academy would be a good resource. Second, I assumed that the transcriptions produced by Nova would be accurate. And finally, I assumed that the summarizations of the transcriptions maintained a sufficient amount of relevant information. And based on these results, we can safely conclude that these three assumptions were true. So what does that mean for us? Should we use AI to create study guides in the future? Well, for me, the answer was yes. My AI study guide led to nothing but an improvement on my score. Now, will that be true for everyone? Not too sure. Nevertheless, the cost of running this code is extremely minimal. Just a few minutes of time. The time it takes to create a couple API keys, clone a repository, and run the code. Doing so does no damage, and there's a chance it'll help. So if you have a few minutes to spare, then go for it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think it's time for me to become a doctor. If you need brain surgery or a checkup, or if you have any questions about the code, leave a comment down below. Links to everything interesting and useful are located in the description. And don't forget, subscribe for more AI content.